says, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate read the polls. Pilate was a classic politician. He did what the crowd wanted. He knew what to get the vote. He knew how to sway the masses. And so Pilate, wanting to please the crowd, it says in the Gospel of Mark, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scorched him to be crucified. Pilate, because he was worried about what others would think about him, what public opinion would matter from him, he denied all manners of everything else and decided then to go with the masses and crucify Jesus. But Pilate also suffered because of this. And Pilate suffered as one of the conditions of the values that conformed him, as one that often two times every single one of us are all way too familiar with. And that is our pride. You know, pride really got in the way of Pilate that day. Pilate was so full of himself that he actually even demanded that Jesus answer a question. Pilate asked Jesus, he said, where are you from? But Jesus didn't answer him. Jesus just, he just sat there and he remained quiet. He invoked his right to remain silent. But then Pilate said to him, are, are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you, Jesus said? Jesus says to him, you have no power over me at all. The only power you've got over me is what has been granted to you by my Heavenly Father above, and that's it. But folks, Pilate just really got mad at that. He really got distraught. His pride started getting to him. And Pilate was really demanding to know why Jesus was keeping quiet. And as if Jesus didn't know that he was talking to the governor. Do you not know who I am? I'm the governor. I can have you crucified. It reminds me of that story of, of the governor in more recent times. His pride got to him as well. He was running for re-election and he was, he was running hot and heavy in the polls. And, and matter of fact, he hadn't had time to stop and eat all day. And he'd come to a little Baptist church that night that was having a fellowship meal. And he thought he would go in there and do some campaigning. And, and after his campaigning, he went into the line to eat. And he was so hungry when he got over there by the lady that was giving out the chicken, he asked her for another piece. She said, well, I'm sorry, sir, but we've just got enough for everybody. And she looked, he looked at her and he said, but lady, do you know who I am? I'm the governor of this state. I, you ain't going to give me another piece of chicken? And she looked at him and she said, mister, do you know who I am? He said, I don't know. Who are you? She said, well, I'm the lady in charge of the chicken. Because, folks, sometimes our pride keeps us from actually coming to Christ. You see, Pilate struggled with pride. And pride will also attempt to control you. And pride will also lead you to be controlled not only by your power, but your possessions. Pilate had a job. He was the governor. And whoever buttered Pilate's bread, this determined who Pilate was loyal to and who his conduct favored. If he knew, if he didn't do what the religious leaders wanted, he could lose his job. He wanted to be, as we call today, politically correct. In the Gospel of John, it says that the religious leaders told Pilate that if you let this man go, you aren't Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. Folks, Pilate was afraid. Well, he was afraid they'd go tell Caesar and... And Caesar, would, he would, at least he'd lose his job, but he'd probably lose his head. Everybody knew there wasn't no king around there. Only Caesar was king. And if they went up there telling him he was aligning with another king, well, he probably would have lost his life. And Pilate was, was scared of losing those things. But folks, what are we scared of by sharing Jesus in the workplace or accepting Jesus today? What is it also that we're afraid of losing? Some of us don't share Christ because, well, and some of us don't come to salvation of Christ because we're afraid that it might cost us our job. But we're afraid that it might cost us possessions we have or, or standings that we have with other people. And you say, well, well preacher, we've got to live. We have to live. I've got to do these things to live. But folks, you don't have to live. The only thing that you have to do is die. 
You'll have to die. But you don't have to live that way. But I can promise you this. If you will submit to Jesus Christ and share Him without fear, God will take care of you. God will take care of you and deliver you into safety. It may not be in the matter that we think and, and perceive that He should, but He will. But folks, not only were there voices that conform, confirm, confronted Pilate, or values that conform Pilate, but there was something else that day, something else, folks, that is going to happen in a day, and it's coming very soon. You know, what scares me to death is this day is coming, and there's many of us that are not ready. Folks, there is a day coming that the Bible talks about is going to be a great trial. There is going to be a great judgment hall. And as Ryan read those scriptures, it says that it will be called the great white throne. And the Bible says that, that he saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and books were opened up. And the dead were judged according to their works which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead. Death and Hades gave up their dead. All were judged, each and every one. And folks, I think that pretty much well puts us in the picture. Small, great, everyone. It doesn't say everyone but. It says everyone. You are going to have to answer for what you've done. You're going to have to answer for the things in life that has happened. And folks, that day Pilate judged Jesus. And today, you're judging Jesus. But folks, that day is coming very soon that Jesus is going to be the judge that is talking about here at this great white throne courtroom. It will be the trial of eternity. The trial that will determine the standing in that courtroom of what happens at that great white throne will determine whether you go to heaven or hell. And folks, today I want to present to you the one that is going to be the prosecuting attorney at your trial. The one who is going to present evidence against you and remind God of every single sin that you have ever committed here on this earth. An individual that the Rolling Stones said, I hope you guess his name. He is the most wretched and wicked creature that has ever slivered his way around the earth. In the Hebrew tongue, he is called Hasatan. In the Greek, he is called Diabolus. We all know him more commonly probably as Satan or the devil. But folks, don't you be deceived today in thinking that he is some monstrous looking creature or villain. But folks, no. On the outside, the Bible says that he will come to you as if an angel of light. But folks, on the inside, he is the definition of darkness. He is the father of all lies. And the Bible also says that he is the accuser of the brethren. And he is going to be there at the great white throne judgment. He is going to be there when you stand before God. He is going to accuse you of every single sin that you have ever committed. And he is going to be there also not only accusing you, but he's going to be bringing evidence to back it up. And I want to present to you one of the articles of evidence that will be there that day. And you don't know about... The, I've got these wrapped, by the way, because they, they, these are actually Steve's shoes. So I've got them wrapped up tight so we don't have to smell them. We can just look at them. But folks, these shoes will be there at your judgment. Satan will have these shoes laid there and marked as evidence standing against you because Steve Fagenbush wore these shoes when he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with you and you rejected it. Here's the proof. They're wore out on the bottom. He's wore the soles almost off his shoes going so many miles of trying, going the extra mile to share Christ with you. But did you accept it? Folks, there's others. A mass. You probably, probably remember this during our youth weekend. Donna Kidd, our, our wonderful youth minister, who has spent countless days, hours, and her time in ministering to your children. But let me ask you, do you even bother to bring your children to church and let it take priority over everything else? Do you show them in life what is really important? That God is number one? It's not other things. Folks, help support her. Teach your children from the beginning that God is the only way. 
that God is more precedent, He is more important, and He is more of a priority in your life than any other thing. But folks, not only has well, Steve Shoes be there, not only will the things that Donna has used in youth ministry be there in court against you, but folks, you're on tape. <laughs> He's got you on tape. These are copies of actual services here at this church, most of them the revival services.